Hey guys, this is the 11 minute version of the tour of the Talking Rocks Caverns in Branson, Missouri uh, that goes along with the main channel video. So I just wanted to uh, be able to put all this video up online. The main channel video is going to be a lot shorter. So if you haven't seen that, you may want to go and check it out before you watch this video which is uh, a longer version of the tour. And then I'm also going to upload the hour-long version if you want to see the entire tour of the Talking Rocks Cavern. See a couple of young boys are on the hillside back in 1883 hunting rabbit. They uh, chase this rabbit underneath the rock ledge, cover them all, look over the edge. They don't find their rabbit. What'd they find? A cave, a big, deep, dark, scary hole in the ground, and they're looking over the edge, and they toss a couple rocks down, and they didn't hear those rocks at the bottom. So they were pretty scared. They were running back home. They told people they'd probably found a bottomless pit out here. And about 10 years later, 1893, a gentleman by the name of Mr. Irwin moves out of the property. He's out here one day herding some cattle down the hillside. He finds a big, deep, dark hole in the ground here on his property. He's pretty curious, too, as to what's at the bottom. Toss a couple rocks down there, but he hasn't been at the bottom. He decides not to go much further, but he wants to know what's at the bottom of that hole. He decides he's going to get a hold of a man named Mr. Truman Powell. They come out here. Bring a couple people with them. They construct what's called a windlass system. It's actually a little bit bigger than this. It had a crank and a pulley on it. They have a bunch of guys on one end of the rope kind of pulling and heaving and hoeing, and they get that uh, other end of the rope going down in the cave. And you see in this picture how Truman and William lowered themselves down. They sit on a stout oak stake branch, attach that rope, they hold the candle, lower themselves down to the bottom. They're down for about five, six hours. Eventually they come back out to the top. They really like what they saw. Truman said it was one of the most beautiful caves he'd ever seen in his life. And William said that if anybody could ever get the chance to see a beauty like this, that people would just be amazed. So William and Truman decided to bring several people back to the cave. One of those trips, they brought their uh, Truman's son, Waldo. Waldo decides he really likes the cave. He wants to purchase it and open it up to the public. So he does that in 1907. 14 years later, 1921, he's able to get steps in down in there, and they open it up under the name Barry Cave. See his first two tour guides? Miss Hazel and Pansy Powell, they were his daughters. They were taking tours down there with a kerosene lantern, pack of food, first aid kits and tools. They had a full waterproof suit on. They walked around on wooden steps. Very similar to what you see in this picture here. Wooden steps, deep, dark, damp, wet, droopy cave. Steps don't last long. They rot, they get slick, they fall through. We're sitting in the original gift shop. Obviously, we've added on some extra gift shop. We're still doing the same thing here 80 years later. I look really young for my age, don't I? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Talking Rocks Cavern, it's a dissolutional cave, most common type of cave here in the United States. What happens here, this area is covered by an ocean a long time ago. Sea floor layers up, ocean recedes, and we're left with a very layered, soluble bedrock that you see all around you. It's called limestone. Very easily broken down. Rainwater will hit the surface, seeps down from soil, picks up carbon dioxide along the way, and becomes a carbonic acid. It comes to this crack in our ceiling, we call our lifeline. Water runs through that crack, runs down the walls, breaks down the minerals in here, and hollows them off. It makes it very open. Then over a period of time, some more mineral-rich water comes into the cave and deposits those minerals onto the walls. There's lots of cool mineral deposits all around the room. Stalactites hang tight to the ceiling. Stalagmites, you might trip over them. Stalactite, stalagmite run together like that one right there. What's that called? Column. A column. Very good. Look up here to see what we call curtains or draperies. <laughs> Very pretty formations. I know you guys in the back are looking at this one here. That's called cave bacon. Low fat, extra crispy bacon. A couple different layers in there are different minerals that have come into the cave over a period of time. You see right up here the largest column here in our cave. 75 feet tall called our Powell's Monument. We named it that in honor of the Powell family. When they were coming into the cave, they're coming down on the rope about where that platform is up there above your guys' head. Drop down that rope, swinging back and forth right here. Truman yells up and tells them to stop. Now they're all kind of worried they come looking over the edge. Truman, what's the matter? He says, nothing's wrong, I just want to look around, I'm looking at the beauty in here. He sees this formation directly in front of him. He saw a right wing here, a left wing here, and a long flowing road in the back. What? Truman called this our angel formation. He thought he was safe in the cave, he had an angel watching over him. And he looked up at the top and could see the angel's head was bowed down in the other direction. He knew there had to be a reason for that angel's head being bowed. It took him several trips back into the cave, but he eventually saw why. There's a small cross or crucifix there in the rock. The bottom of it is a point there. The top, a little white spot on the top, and goes across in the middle. So Truman thought that was pretty neat. He wanted to point it out to people. We check it out. I think it's pretty cool. Why is it called Talking Rocks? It was called Fairy Cave for many, many years. And in fact, the last known Powell, Walker Powell, came to the cave last night and was telling some stories about what he used to do here. He owned the cave, him and his family, up until 1969. Walker and his wife, Johanna, sold the cave 
to a place called Servidar City. Some of you may know them. So Servidar City, being very flashy and showy, took something that the Powell said. They said the rocks would speak to them visually. Walker's dad, Waldo, would come into the cave and say that. He could look at the rocks and learn a lot. So Servidar City actually changed the name Talking Rocks Cavern. A lot of you guys probably saw that on the brochure when you came in. You were expecting to talk to a rock. Fortunately, our rocks don't talk anymore. In that year, Servidar City actually installed speakers on the wall in the cave. Covered up the speakers with concrete, and you can kind of see these lights here. We've made them look like a rock. The same thing with the speakers. You get down to the bottom, and the lights would dim down. There was a flashing light, there was a thunder sound, and then a big booming voice would come on and tell the story of the cave. Needless to say, it scared everyone to death. <laughs> <laughs> so, we took out the talking rocks, but we liked the name Talking Rocks Cavern. So we kept the name, and I'm the only one that does the talking now. <laughs> if the rocks do start talking to you, please let me know. <laughs> we need to get you out of here as quickly as possible. You look up here to my right, you see that cathedral I was talking about. Obviously much larger when you're standing next to it, and you can see where these curtains have kind of dripped down. There was ledge rock up at the top, water was uh, flowing out very quickly over the top of it, and it created the flat top. And then once the water started to drip down, it kind of dripped down in these curtain formations. It's still growing. They formed around clay, like I said. So right here, you can see where they've separated out. This is a natural door and a natural hollow entrance. All we did here was go up their steps right up to them and get to walk through there. Another rock has some formation. Let's see some more cave bacon over here. I have a surprise for you. Some people up here have already seen it, so I don't get to surprise them. There's a Christmas tree in the ceiling. <laughs> Hanging completely upside down. It is a fake tree in the ceiling, and we put it up there. A little bit of a story. It goes behind the Christmas tree. I told you guys Servidar City actually bought the cave in 1969 and changed the name and did that whole thing. They actually still own the cave today. And they come over here quite a bit. They looked up at the ceiling, one of those strips, and they saw this lifeline I talked about earlier is going very strongly into that back direction. This back wall is not rock, it's rather clay. Very good indication, there's more cave on the other side. So the best way to test that theory, drill the hole down to right about there. First off, to make sure they're hitting the cave. Then they go 50 feet that direction and drill three more holes and they find air on the other side. They know there's more cave over there. So they get to digging back into that clay and eventually they hit what they call flow stone. It's very similar to what you'll see on the back of the cathedral here. They figure they can probably dig down. They'll eventually get some curtains. They can get around those curtains and eventually maybe find more cave. The problem is we have to take all the clay out in buckets, piece by piece. Every time it rains, water comes falling through that hole very quickly all over these steps. They're very muddy, very wet. We can't take people up here anymore. <coughs> so I rope this off. So a hole in the ceiling we had to do something about. So one Christmas, we put a Christmas tree up in the gift shop, decorated it up, walked down all this way and turned it upside down right here. Strung a rope down through that hole. There's about 65 feet of earth on top of us. Then it's about another 70 feet down the cave right here. We tie the tree off, go up on the surface, Pulling the rope until the tree's up there and even with the ceiling. Then they tie the rope off on a tree on the surface. And there our Christmas tree hangs. It's now the end of August. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was this past Christmas? That was actually uh, <laughs> a Christmas before I started working here. And I started working here as a junior in high school. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm now three years into college. <laughs> we do take the tree down and replace the rope. We pray, replace the lights. Uh, every Christmas. Mm. We put new lights on it, we put lights all around the cave, we have Christmas in the cave, it's pretty cool. You guys ever back around that town, it's pretty neat to see, it's real pretty. Yeah. Is that really algae? Yeah, natural condition is perfect for algae, other than the fact that there's no natural light in the cave. We have our lights on for sometimes 10 hours a day. Oh, okay. And, uh, the algae starts to grow, it's not hurting anything, and we do wash it off about two, three times a year. Yeah. That rock's actually stained green. We do have uh, some cave bees. Have you seen our beehives? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we've got a cave dragon. Would you like to see my dragon? Mm -hmm. There's an eye. There's an eye. It's big nose. Mm -hmm. It's nostril. Oh. A horn. And his mouth down below. Yeah. <laughs> That's serving the cave dragon. Does anybody here know the natural job of a cave? Listen very closely, you can hear the cave doing its job. Filtration of water. Yeah. Getting water out to uh, keep us from flooding upstairs. And this year we've had a whole lot of rain. Last June, first tour rolls around about 10 o'clock. We had a whole lot of rain on the Saturday morning. Water level's up to there. Oh, wow. Jeez. Wow. Uh, half price tours. 
<laughs> I took people down this platform here, gave them a raincoat, let them look around, and they still got soaking wet. It's like a waterfall in here. It is hmm. really, really cool. If you're ever around around that time, come down and see it. We're going to head over this hill here. I'll take a picture, and we'll turn on the lights, see if we can find our way out. Matthew? Uh -huh. Can you get in front of me so that you can pull my hands up? Turn on the lights, so here we go. One, yeah. two, First explorers came in here using candlelight. Okay. Well, a little something like this. They were probably leaning back and forth on a rope. Then they hit a stream of water. <laughs> Flashlights are slightly more effective, obviously, but you always want to bring spare batteries with you into a cave. A little bit of bad news. This angel here is constantly dripping a steady flow of water on steps we have to go through. It's completely unavoidable and a little bit chilly. A lot of people like to run through there and then turn around and laugh at their friends. And when they do that, they hit the head right there. <laughs> it's called a rock with many names. Uh, another little thing for a lot of seconds for. Here on the corner, there's another one jutting out to your right. Stay close enough to the hammer or we shouldn't miss it. You might know to stop about halfway up and catch your breath, and then we'll head on our way up. We'll head up here. This is the same way we came in. It's a little bit tight, low-hanging rocks. Watch out for those. And I uh, thank you guys for coming out. I know there's lots of cool stuff doing Branson, and I appreciate you guys coming out and listening to me talk for an hour. It's far down there. Yes, that is. Hey guys, this was the 11 minute version of the tour. If you want to watch the main channel video, a more polished and edited video of the Talking Rocks Caverns, make sure to go and check that one out. Or if you want to see the entire tour, which is about 45 minutes long, you can watch that also. Outside of the Talking Rocks Caverns, there was a couple little activity things you can do, and that's what the two extra videos there are for if you want to go and check those out as well. Just a little bit of fun outside.